home means to me the place where I can come back and relax and leave all the pressures about life. Home means to me in England with my family. I don't have a connection to any of the places I lived in, including even the place I was born. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just feel no attachment to the Netherlands, the US, the UK. I first came to London and I started playing music in the street. Uh, I then found a job playing music in a boat, in a Cambridge pond. And then I started meeting people, getting connected, and started working as a session player. I grew up um, in Jamaica. When I came here, we were living in Balham. That's the first place we started living. And um, in those days, it was hard being on the street after six o'clock. Yeah. In those days, we had the Teddy Boys. They are like the punk rockers. You all know now. In those days, it was Teddy Boys. And they were very racist. I guess you could say I grew up in three different countries. The Netherlands, the US, and uh, the UK. I came to Britain, I don't really know the reason why I came to Britain. Um, something, it was pretty uncomfortable to live in my area of the US, which was Faribault, Minnesota. Uh, it was pretty, it was not as diverse. One time I asked the lunch lady, they were serving, they were selling hot dogs, and I asked the lunch lady, um, does this have pork in it? And I've worn the hijab since I was five years old. Um, and I was like, oh, I can't eat pork. Does this have pork in it? And she knew that it had pork in it, but she was like, no, it's fine. It's whatever Muslims can eat. And she, and I was only six years old, so I was just like, okay. <laughs> so I ate it, and then I felt so ill. And then I went home, and then I told my mom, I'm like, I ate something really weird. And then she, I got transferred out of that school so fast. <laughs> And the most important aspects of Argentinian culture, the main one is the passion about football. We have also a very common ceremony that it's drinking, drinking mate. Um, it's a very typical drink from Argentina. Um, it's also an excuse for people hanging around and sharing moment. And the mate is a little pumpkin that is filled with a herb that is called sherba mate and you put a metal straw that is called bombilla inside and you drop the hot water inside and you drink it. Every little thing is gonna be alright. Woke up this morning. You're funny. <laughs> we love our music. And um we love our different dishes. So um, when we all get together, you know, that's it. That's our culture. And we do try to maintain that culture. Come on, stop it, I think the most important aspects of Somali culture 
is probably the language. It brings people together because it's such a bend her language. <laughs> Um, the thing uh, of me living here is that I live in London, that is a place where we have a lot of mixture of different cultures, so I get in touch with a lot of cultures from different places, except from the British one. Oh yes, I have adapted, oh yes, I've adapted quite a lot of the English culture now, yes, you know, because of the, the work I did. You know, the work I did, um, caring for patient residents, yeah. I can't say I've adopted any English culture. Uh, if I have, I haven't really noticed it. <laughs> I think maybe I say some words differently now. Uh, since I learned English in the U.S., I've had an American accent pretty much the whole time, but more recently, I think, uh, I've used more British type words. I couldn't live back in Jamaica because of the, um, the way I see it at the time when I was went there. When um, my daughter and grandson got there, they call us foreigners, although I was born there. When we got on the bus, we paid our fare, and I can remember this woman just clap down on you, you know. The bus was full, but I think to her she didn't want to stand up. And being a foreigner, she just clapped down on my, on top of me. I couldn't say anything at all. <laughs> couldn't say anything at all because, you know, they are so, with guns and all that. So I just kept quiet. Um, I've never been to Somalia um, because of, of civil war and other tensions and the U.S. involvement. Um, and I would love to go there. Even recently, I would, would have loved to go this summer when my, when my brother went, even though it was really dangerous. Since this last time I've been traveling and moving so much, uh, it's hard to pick a place where I feel most at home. But if I have to pick one, I guess I will choose the place where I was living before coming to England in Buenos Aires, Rodney 154 in the neighborhood of Chacarita. Home to me is where my family is, as cheesy it may sound. Um, so, where, or whatever country we're in, that could be the new home because I'm just living with my, my fam, my family. <laughs> so I could just go to Singapore or Taiwan the next day. And... I do feel at home here because um, I've got all my children here. <laughs> they were all born here, <laughs> got married here, so I do feel at home. Look, Rahim is mum's. Mum's just called him Rahim a boy. Boy. Come on, Amy. Roots rock, you know. Hey, hey. Come on, girlie. Come on. Come on, Rum Rock. <laughs> we know you are okay. We just want you to come a rock with us, Amy. Okay.